गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू टुडे अगेन टू द सरफेस केमिस्ट्री चैप्टर लेक्चर्स एज यू नो वी हैव डन नंबर ऑफ गुड थिंग्स नंबर ऑफ सिलेबस इज वी आर गोइंग टू गोइंग थ्रू सो प्लीज रिमेंबर ऑनलाइन क्लासेज आर फॉर यू फ्रॉम स्कूल सो दैट यू कैन लर्न इफेक्टिवली एफिशेंटली डोंट सिट आइडल एट होम्स बिकॉज यू नो दिस इज अ बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन क्लास दिस इज अ बोर्ड क्लास सो यू हैव टू स्टडी डोंट थिंक दैट द टाइम विल पास बाय एंड वी विल बी ओके नो डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू हैव टू स्टडी एवरी डे द लॉन्गर द लॉकडाउन विल बी द शॉर्टर द टाइम वी विल गेट टू प्रिपेयर फॉर बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन एंड योर बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन विल स्टार्ट वेरी सून सो प्लीज लिसन केयरफुली टू द लेक्चर्स ऑफ केमिस्ट्री फिजिक्स एंड ऑल द सब्जेक्ट्स विच यू आर गेटिंग according to the timetable provided by the school during the lockdown so please concentrate on your study spend self study time spend more times on study less time on gadgets so let's start with the today's lecture today i am going to discuss with you five differences the first of all i am going to discuss difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis homogeneous catalysis uh, catalyst has the same phase as that of the reactant in it so in case of homogeneous catalysis the reactant as well as catalyst are in the same phase either in liquid phase or in gaseous phase on the other hand in case of heterogeneous catalysis the catalyst is always in different phase as compared to the reactant next point in this type of catalyst in case of homogeneous in this type of catalyst catalyst enter into the chemical combination with one of the reactants to form intermediate compound which then give products and the catalyst is regenerated so we can say in case of homogeneous catalysis intermediates are formed on the other hand in heterogeneous catalysis the these catalysts are usually solids so they provide surface for the reaction to takes place and uh, reactant get converted into product so main difference is in homogeneous catalysis the reactant as well as catalyst are in same phase in heterogeneous catalysis the reactant and catalyst are in different phase in homogeneous catalysis the intermediates are formed in heterogeneous catalysis no intermediate are formed now next is true solution and colloidal solution first of all let's let us talk about size the size of true solution the particle size is always less than 1 nanometer whereas uh, in case of colloidal solution the size uh, varies from 10 nanometer to 1000 uh, 10 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer or 10 am strong to 1000 am strong next true solution does not show tindall effect colloidal solution shows tindall effect true solution does not show brownian movement colloidal solution shows brownian movement next true solution do not show electrophoresis colloidal solution shows electrophoresis true solution cannot be coagulated colloidal solution can be coagulated so now you are getting to know new terms out here the new terms are tindall effect brownian movement and electrophoresis i would like to tell you all the three so listen very carefully what is tindall effect whenever we pass a beam of light through a solution in a dark room suppose we have a solution in a beaker and it's a completely dark room and if we pass a beam of light through the solution if the beam of light gets scattered this is known as tindall effect so tindall effect is usually shown by colloidal solution as well as suspensions because their because their size is more than 1 nanometer if the size is less than 1 nanometer tindall effect cannot be shown so the main difference true solution show tindall effect colloidal solution does not show tindall effect what is tindall effect Tra scattering of light scattering of light is known as tindall effect that is in a closed dark room when light is passed through the solution if its particles scatter the light they show tindall effect okay the next uh, is brownian movement uh, brownian movement was discovered by robert brown robert brown was sitting idle near a pond and he saw some pollen grains 
moving here and there on the surface of water actually in pond the surface of water remains stagnant it does not move but how come those pollen grains were moving so he discovered it was because of a special kind of zigzag motion which is shown by the particles of the liquid present on the surface so what is a brownian movement a zigzag motion so true solution does not show brownian movement and colloidal solution show then next is electrophoresis what is electrophoresis electrophoresis is movement of positively and negatively charged particle towards the opposite electrodes movement of positively and negatively charged particles towards the opposite electrodes and this movement is uh, shown by colloidal particles because they always have charge whereas true solution does not have charge okay next question is uh, what is the difference between multimolecular colloids and macromolecular colloids okay multimolecular multimolecular colloids are formed by the aggregation of large number of atoms or smaller molecules whereas macromolecular colloids are formed by molecules of large large molecular mass on dissolution in suitable solvent so what are multimolecular colloid smaller molecules or atoms combine and give rise to bigger molecule whereas macromoleculoids macromolecular colloids are themselves bigger molecules example of multimolecular colloids are gold sol okay whereas uh, example of macromolecular colloids are starch cellulose protein and enzyme next uh, multimolecular colloids cannot resemble true solution whereas macromolecular colloids always resemble true solution now the difference between colloids and uh, emulsion that is sol and emulsion you know solar colloids of solid and liquid they have solid as dispersed phase and liquid as dispersion medium in other words we can say colloids have two kind of phases dispersion phase and dispersion medium they both can be solid or liquid they both can be liquid or gas matlab they differ from each other whereas in emulsion always remember dispersion phase and dispersion medium are in liquid form so emulsions are of two type oil in water and oil in water and water in oil I have told you number of times now we come to the last difference lyophilic and lyophobic sol as name suggests lyophilic loving that is there is a interaction between a dispersion phase and dispersion medium and lyophobic means solvent heating there is repulsion between dispersion phase and dispersion medium in case of lyophilic sols you don't require any kind of emulsifier but in lyophobic sol you require emulsifier what is emulsifier emulsifier is that chemical substance which forms bond between dispersed phase and dispersion medium let's, uh, let's learn lyophilic sols have strong affinity between dispersed phase and dispersed medium i have already told you attraction and lyophobic sols have weak uh, attraction between dispersion phase and dispersion medium lyophilic sols are self stable they are very stabilized they don't need any extra stabilizing agent like emulsifier lyophobic sols are unstable so always need emulsifier uh lyophilic sols are reversible in nature lyophobic sols are irreversible in nature example of lyophilic sols are starch sol agar agar and protein and uh, example of lyophobic sols are as2s3 and ferric hydroxide solution so my dear students please i am attaching uh, uh, at least 3 to 4 differences with respect to pictures uh, in this lecture so that you can pen down them so please write all the five differences today in your school notebook copy please be safe study hard thank you